Okay, for the record, it is definitely not limited to those disclaimer, disclaimers. Um, <clears throat> all right, so this talk is Web Scale is Dead, Long Live PostgreSQL, or The Drinks Are On Me. We got some McClellan 15, we got some Red Best 12, and some Hibiki 12. So we've got the Scottish, the Irish, and the Japanese, all known for their very lengthy love of all things that make us sane and crazy. Uh, here's the deal with these. Uh, th at the end of this talk, there's going to be a series of three trivia questions. You are not allowed to use your phone. If you get the last one, you get this one, because this one is the one that matters. I was going to get the 21, but I'm not getting paid to be here. So, uh, And then the other two are for these. I'm also peppering questions in prov throughout the rest of the talk. Um, if you get one of those questions right, your first drink is on me. We'll hand you 20 bucks. Take whatever shot, cocktail, whatever you want, a couple of beers if you're a hipster and really have bad taste, PBR. Um, okay, so this is Web Sales Dead, Long Live Postal Skill. This is slide one of my disclaimer. I am not responsible for you being sensitive. That's your problem. This talk is not wholesome. It's not organic, it's not sweet, it's not raw honey. This is 100% highly processed high fructose corn syrup. Where's the next slide? Thank you. It is rated PG-13. Um, I actually don't swear all that damn much, but occasionally it comes out, and especially when I'm improv if someone says something that particularly sets me off, like Rails is a good platform, uh, I might say something. I do this for fun, it's not my day job. This is not JD the professional, I'm not here trying to get your business. I'm here to educate you a little bit, let you have some fun, enjoy each other. If you don't enjoy my particular form of comedy, I don't care, there's other talks, go for it. Uh, your ego is not my concern. To take offense is not to be comfortable in oneself, and that's true. If you're taking offense to some guy that's standing up here saying stuff, no matter what he's saying, think about why you're taking offense to him. Does what I say mean so much to you that you want it to ruin your whole day? Uh, I hope you laugh and learn, and yes, announcing I'm offended is basically telling the world you can't control your own emotions, so everyone else should do it for you. What does that mean? It means this talk is for adults. If you're not an adult, leave, okay? These are adults that I like to listen to, not because I agree with all of them, I don't, but because I find them funny. I find them funny in their offense. We've got Bill Burr, who is probably the angriest comedian I've ever seen. We got Louis C.K., who is actually a very kind man, but one of the most offensive individuals you ever watch. We have got Julio Iglesias, who you live by the cake, die by the cake. Others know him as Fluffy. We have Eliza, and I have no idea how to pronounce her last name. It's, it's some long Schlesenagelaga thing, uh, but she is a fabulous comedian. We've got Robin Williams, unfortunately, passed recently. We have got Bill Maher. We've got John, I'm sure everybody knows John Stewart. Poor guy's retiring. Well, not poor. He's retiring quite rich. Uh, but he's retiring this year. Stephen Colbert. Um, oh, I want to say Aunt Anzi. Aziz, yes. I actually only watched the first 15 minutes of his stuff before I got caught up on a bunch of other things. And he's a funny guy. In fact, he's funny enough to where I was offended a couple of times. And then, of course, Tina Fey. We all know Tina Fey. Um, and then, a four-slide disclaimer. Seriously, what is wrong with people today? It used to be that you were allowed to just be fun and not worry about your precious snowflake. Uh, and this comes from activist morality. If you tweet, I don't know if a lot of you do, uh, tweet, twit, whatever. Um, that's my hashtag for this talk, okay? None of this activist morality crap. If, if you believe in something, great, believe in it, fight for it. Don't give me shit because I don't believe in it too, okay? That's part of what being human and American is all about. How many non-Americans do we have here? No, one, two, three. 
That it? Bummer. I was really hoping to have some offensive culture thing going on. All right. Who am I? I am at Linux Hiker. Okay. If you want to tweet about this talk and you want to reference how badly I'm doing, there you go. I actually do use Google Plus. It's not dead. It's Plus Joshua Drake Linux Hiker. And uh, it's actually quite active. It's just active with stuff that's not all crap, which is why I don't have Facebook. Uh, JD at command prompt, if in case you decide, hey, this guy, yeah, he was you know, off the clock and on vacation, but I wouldn't mind talking to him again. That's my commercial professional. I will bill you for email. Uh, no title applicable to Command Prompt Inc. Any of you who are here as a founder know that titles as a founder really don't mean a damn thing because you do everything you need to do to make sure everybody gets paid, including yourself. Uh, I am a director for software in the public interest. Don't let my talk reflect on them. They are a great organization. They're the nonprofit behind Postgres Org, as well as Debian, uh, LibreOffice in the United States, a bunch of great nonprofits that do a, or a great software projects that do a lot of good for us. And I am a director and founder of USPG until this last election I was president. Uh, it is great that Robert is now president because now he gets to worry about all the crap and I just got to have fun. Pint, ah yes, private invitation parties are for hipsters. Don't be a hipster. Penthouse conference party tonight. This is not my party. This is the conference party where everybody should actually be. It's the only party. It's at Ramscale Studios, 8 p.m. midnight at the penthouse. It's all barbecue, right? Barbecue, booze, fun, hanging out. It'll be a good time. Helping control license costs. We'll get to the talk here in a minute. Uh, if you are selling licenses to software, you are not helping to control license costs. Be honest to your customers and say, we are still charging you for licenses, even though what we make is actually available for free. Uh, the world is not flat, no matter what Fox News says. Any Fox News honest watchers here is not like for the comedy of it? Really, Jimmy? Well, you're from Jersey. I'm not surprised. Um, but I, I actually don't watch Fox News because the only TV I have comes from the internet, so I, I don't have to be inundated with information from a company that actually went to the Supreme Court for the right to lie to people. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they have a couple of people that are flat earthers that are on TV. Uh, before we get into this, let's have some fun. This is not for this, okay? Who won the 2014 Turing Award? Well, hold on, I know you know. <laughs> Andrew. Stonebreaker did. 20 bucks. Who is, the, who is Stonebreaker in relation to PostgreSQL? Now, hold on, come on. Someone that's not a community like Maven here. You. He's a developer. Bingo. He's probably kind of the founding developer, really. But that's close enough. All the way back to University of Ingress in 1974. Yes, he's older than dirt. Where does this person currently work? MIT, he is an adjunct professor. I don't know the man, I tried to meet the man, but because I don't know the man, he won't meet me. Uh, I tried to, when, back when I used to run these conferences, way before they were this cool, um, I tried to get him to come speak, kind of as a, you know, hey, you know, Postgres is doing this stuff, you should come in, and he wouldn't have it. It's unfortunate, because I think he would have had a lot of fun. But he's obviously out doing more interesting things like getting a million bucks from Google, so who am I to judge? What are we talking about? Yes, I actually, add, for those who have seen me talk, I normally don't do these animation things, but I was revising this talk at a really late hour last night because for some reason I just didn't like everything about it, so I added these little things just to make it you know, seem like I might wear a tie someday. Um, we're going to talk about a little bit of history. What is web scale? Crap. Web scale is dead. PostgreSQL is king. And the conclusion. The conclusion, we'll have our little uh, fun time with these. Hello, Alexei. Alexei is an awesome developer out of currently Germany, but he's formerly from the new state of Russia, Ukraine. Um, if you want to hire one of the best, and you're willing to pay for it because he deserves it, you should talk to him. He's got a great job. I'm not trying to get him away from his job. Uh, but he is damn good, and he deserves the props. So if any of you got a little extra uh, 
I, I'd say euros, but the euros are not worth anything anymore. So if you got any dollars for them, he might be interested. Little history. Postgres is the, sorry, well, Postgres too, because there's Ingress, Postgres, Postgres 95, Postgres QL, Postgres. Um, the oldest open source databases, one, uh, is it the oldest that's still used? I, I believe it is. I mean, I don't know anybody else that's 41 years old that, that is uh, out there still kicking ass and taking names of teenagers, or even, or even children for that matter. Yeah, it's a database. I mean, that's fair. But does it predate? No. Oh. Um, it is derived from University of Ingress, 1974. That's actually where I start. I, my original database career started, uh, I was working at Powell's Books, and they were running DBase. And I learned DBase, and then they just had University of Ingress sitting on the shelf. And so I compiled, or I don't think I had to compile it. Yeah, I had to compile it. Compiled it and played with it, and that's where I started. Uh, but the first actual Postgres that I used was Postgres 95, and I, I say actual because that's when I started making money from it, and it doesn't matter before that. The most advanced open source possibly of closed two databases, and why do I say that? The project says uh, the world's most advanced open source database, which it is. There is no database or wannabe database, Mongo, that um, can compete with Postgres. But the reason I say the most advanced is because, yes, there are things that Oracle can do if you're willing to spend a million dollars that Postgres can't. There, there's no question about that. They got a million dollars. They got a you know, huge budget. That said, if you take everything that we can do out of the box, plus everything that you can do if you just add an extension, plus everything that you can do from any number of any other things, there is nothing, no database, not from Microsoft, not from, well, there's really only three people now, Microsoft, IBM, and Oracle, and they can't touch us. They wish they could, but they can't. Uh, so that is why they're most advanced open source database. And you can see it in the marketplace. Everything from Apple shipping it by default with their workstations, uh, even though it's using it as a very minor thing, it's still there, all the way up to people using it to create their billion dollar companies. Uh, it's fully asset compliant, it's relational, it's object relational, it's document if you're into that new thing that's not a new thing but they want it to be a new thing because they put on their plaid shirt. Modern, scalable database. Hey Kevin, come on in man. Not, you're at the door, you gotta come sit. Come on. This is Kevin Kempter, he's from Consistent State. They are another consulting company, they are awesome. Uh, he kind of went quiet for a little while, he used to run the PG Days in Denver. But recently, I've started seeing um, some tweets, promoted tweets on Twitter for his company, which notes that although I know you're at least as old as I am, someone much younger than you is starting to drive the marketing sales. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I need to point someone out. Uh, this Michael Masks, did I get that right, Mike? And Dave Kramer, they're from Creditive. I point them out because when I gave this talk at scale, I forgot to mention Joe Conway, who's also at Creditive, and he was very hurt, and I felt bad um, because Joe's awesome. So what is WebScale? WebScale is not this. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'll let you take 10 seconds to read it on your own. This is from MongoDB is WebScale, and they're actually talking about MySQL, which is crap too. But it... It's not this. A lot of people think it's this, but it's not. It's, this is just what fanboyism creates, right? It was co-opted by these guys. Not developer, forward deployed engineer with no chest hair and a tattoo in the middle. Okay? I don't know what he is but I don't think he identifies as any gender currently listed in the consensus. Um, these guys, they are horrible for the market. They're horrible because they go out and they somehow think that Amazon or GCE or whatever is the solution to everything, and then they bail to go drink coffee wherever hipsters drink coffee and leave their customers hanging and then they have to call me and I have to move them off of Amazon. 
So, and that's not to knock Amazon. I'll get to why that's the case here soon. I, they do have a good platform, and I know they're a sponsor here, so Amazon really, I understand. Um, but there are some specific things that just don't belong in a shared tenancy network latency environment, regardless of provisioned IOPS. One of those would be where you keep all your damn data, which should be Postgres. If it's anything else, migrate, we'll help you. We start at 195 an hour. Um, web scale is, <laughs> I found this graphic, just, and, I, and I, I appreciated this graphic, the whole deep impact kind of thing. All it is is an architecture based around a philosophy. That's it. It's not technology. It's not new. It's certainly not new. It's as old as I am, at least. It's just now we have a different inner tube to work with. What is the core at it? core of it. It's consolidation on x86, it's intelligence and software, distributed everything including storage, self-healing, API-based automation and rich analysis. Well, it looks like Amazon and GCE. Um, this is sourced from a white paper on that link. What's interesting about this white paper is that it's from Nutanix or Nutanix or whatever who surprisingly became a sponsor of this conference. Uh, I'm sure the product is great, but would like most marketing material, it's bullshit. Consolidation on x86, pretty obvious, no Spark, no PowerPC, no ARM, and for those graybeards out there, no MIPS. I actually asked if anybody had MIPS, if anybody had a MIPS machine. Does anybody here have a MIPS machine? Your router? Or an actual MIPS, like an Indy? SG nice. Okay, so those, can anyone besides Frost tell me, you gotta give him 20 bucks. Anybody besides Frost tell me what MIPS used to be? Who was the big purveyor of a MIPS chip? God, you, most of you are as old as I am. I mean, I know you're like 14, but what about you, Andrew? SGI, SGI Indies. These were the apples of the day, except that they were cool. And they were these blue or purple boxes. They shipped with ISDN on the motherboard. Who knows what ISDN is? You don't care. You don't. My, Michael. What is ISDN? Sort of. It's not phone. It's data. <laughs> Need a different answer. <laughs> Yes, the thing about ISDN, back when the internet was first starting to get commercialized, everybody was stuck on like 2400, and then 9600, then 144, and then you got 288, and you thought you were a god. Um, but there was something that came along. It had been around a long time, uh, but it just started to get popular because people wanted to be able to download their um, art from the internet faster. Um, and you went from 28.8 or 56K, you, all of a sudden you got 128K. And at 128K in the day at those resolutions, you got moving art from the internet at fast speeds. Okay? And that's what you would download. I mean, that's what you would buy is this ISDN connection. You have little routers. There's a company named Sen that made this great router. And what was cool about it is if you were an ISP, ISDNs could also answer analog. So you could have a, what was called a PRI, which would have 23 channels. It would come in on one port, and you have 23 channels. You could answer 23 calls of either ISDN at 56 or 64 or 112 and 128K, or good old-fashioned analog, whatever modem was dialing up. It was a really efficient way to handle your capacity. Anyway, I don't know how we got on that. Um, <laughs> Oh, MIPS with, with uh, ISDN on board. Uh, it's a good idea. It's sad because, I mean, once upon a time, I had Spark machines. I, had, I even had Deck Alphas. I had SGI Indies in my closet. I used to fire them all up. I tried to install every version of Linux on them. I even had Deck Alpha running Windows NT. Um, and then I grew up and got rid of them all because I didn't have any more room in my closet. Um, but yeah, so now we're all on x86 x86 is one, yeah, ARM is out there, but for the most part, I mean, anything we're running is some kind of x86 chip. 
Intelligence and software. There's no intelligence in software. Can you imagine this? Software is binary. It is a true or false condition at all times. The moment it's intelligent, I want you to look at the person next to you and find the first flaw. What do you think a freaking Terminator is going to do? These people are not perfect. They're dead. There's no intelligence in software. The I mean, the community has even come out and said, we, we need to protect the human race from artificial intelligence. Well, then stop researching the damn thing. Okay? No hardware dependency for scalability or availability. Resources should be able to be dynamically added without hardware upgrade or replacement. We've been able to do this for years. This isn't new. It's called proper provisioning. Distributed everything. Bullshit. I almost brought that button. I almost brought it, but I, I really was afraid. I didn't think the TSA would understand. They would find it offensive and be afraid to like, push the button and it talk to them. I'd be like on the ground getting touched everywhere, and I just didn't want anything to do with it. Um, all data, metadata, and operations are distributed across the entire cluster. OK, that's cool. Where I run into problem is there's one word. Can someone tell me what the one word in there that is terrifying to have distributed across a network? There's only one. Hold on. Locks. Locks. What is a database administrator's nightmare? How can I put this nicely? The asshole who is a business analyst who, for whatever reason, is above you in the chain, therefore they get access to the database directly through Excel, and they know enough that if they don't lock the table, there's going to be whatever, and then all of a sudden they bring you down. Do you really want network latency added to your locks? It's, it's crazy. It's not a good... Now, it does work sometimes. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you've got a small database... You know, you're serving up your blog, you're, you're serving up, you know, your $99 a month AWS instance, that's fine. But when you're doing the real deal, you don't want your locks networked in any way. Self-healing assumes failure and that any failure will not jeopardize the health of the cluster. Isn't that called high availability? I mean, to me, I mean, when my shit breaks, it fails over and keeps working. That seems like what it's supposed to do. I mean, that's why you have two kidneys, right? Anyway, who can tell me who that is? This, not the character, the person. Robert, who said that? Nice. 20 bucks. Okay, Robert Patrick. Can anyone tell me something he's been in that is not that role? Was he in the X-Files? I didn't watch this one. Okay, cool. All right. He's also, he was also in, um, he's been in Burn Notice, True Blood. He plays a werewolf in True Blood. That was kind of cool. API-based automation and rich analytics. This has got to be the most hipster thing I've ever heard. It's called reporting. Really? Um, and I kid you not, I don't give a damn. I know how to run a query. Now, I know this is important to some people in ties. Um, you know, they need to have their pretty canvas, they need to be able to click, and, and, and actually that's really cool, I'm not arguing, it, it, I, I wish my guys would actually turn our monitoring something that was useful like that, because I'm tired of parsing data. Yes? Oh. <laughs> awesome! Okay, first off, Google Translate. <laughs> uh, and I think that's Italian, is that Italian? Yeah, okay. Okay, it is I apparently I do not grammatically understand Italian. That's true. I don't argue that. Um, but it was it's close enough. <laughs> uh, 1980s movie, watched it with girlfriends, got a lot of points. Uh, web scale is dead. I feel like the dead horse still needs to be beaten. I really <laughs> This whole web skills thing, it, 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 it gets under my skin. Because I, I, why can't we just say, hey, we're going to build you out 20 minutes. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, why can't we just build out an infrastructure and not have to sell that infrastructure? Why, does that, why, why do we always have to sell up, right? Even, to our, even if you're in a data center and you have bosses, I understand having to say, here are the facts of the situation. 
But it's gotten to the point now where you can't present facts. You have to do a whole presentation on why something's bullshit. That's nice. Prove it. I plan on being this man. Either, Michael might beat me to it, but I, I plan on being this man. I'm, I'm going to be the guy that stares all the people down just angry because I've been through this for so many years. Web scale is a marketing term. That is all it is. So if you get people telling you, oh, Postgres isn't web scale, say, thank you for letting me know I should never hire you. Um, for everything that professionals, most of us here are at least in our 30s, 40s here. Some of us are, I'm going to leave that number alone. Um, young enough to take me down, but old enough to be hurt in the next day. Um, I've been doing for decades. We just create highly scalable systems. It's not new on Amazon. Amazon's not new. They just figured out how to, a way to charge you twice what you should be paying. And I can prove that if you really want to know. Postgres skill is king. King. Don't teach your children to read. Just teach. Don't teach your children. Sorry, I'm not from Louisiana. Don't just teach your children to read. Teach them to question what they read. Teach them to question everything. That also applies to your staff. And especially your boss in first class in lay down sleets on a domestic flight. Thank God that was such a nice flight. But I don't read CTO magazine. A lot of these people do. I, I had a customer, and I'm not going to name him because he's a great customer, but you know who you are, who went to an Amazon conference right before this, or some Amazon event. And I'll tell you, Amazon knows how to put it on. We, we've, got, we've got miles to go before we're competing with Amazon and giving a conference. And I got an email, and I'm sure all the consultants here have got this email. Amazon just released all this new stuff, and I just read it and watched it, and they were really fancy, and I want to migrate to them now. I said, okay. It'll cost you twice as much. Oh, no, it can't be. They can perform just as well as bare metal. Da, 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 da. I'm an auctioneer. Okay. So I billed him to actually go and provision the whole thing in Amazon compared to where he is now, software, rocks, use it. And it would literally have been twice as much. And they would have been stuck because they would have had to use the highest level of EC2 available. That was, that was, they would have been done. They would have migrated and then ran out of capacity and had to migrate right back off. Now, that doesn't mean that Amazon doesn't have cool stuff for certain workloads. Databases that are of high velocity are not it. So let's talk about why Postgres is king. Let's, you want to replicate? We got hot standby and cascading replication. This is native core stuff. I know there's a lot of other bastardized things out there like Sloney. Um, and don't get me wrong, Sloney can do some really crazy stuff but it's one of those things where they stuck a bunch of engineers in a room and you told them to paint the wall black and they asked which shade. So, hot standby. As many or as few readable subscribers as your bandwidth can handle, it just ships. Okay? Hot who here doesn't know what a hot standby is? It's okay, I won't pick on you for it, I promise. Okay, okay. hot standby is when you have a readable up-to-date copy of the database, meaning as changes are being made to the master, which is the big happy, they're automatically transferred to the little happies. Now, this can be done synchronously or asynchronously. I highly recommend you keep it asynchronous unless you know exactly what you're doing because Postgres will go down if one of the slaves are synchronous and stop accepting changes. It doesn't not literally go down, not like crash, but it will stop receiving or allowing you to process because it's waiting for everybody to be caught up. If you know what you're doing and you know how to manage that and you know how to make Postgres work with that, synchronous is great. But otherwise, keep it asynchronous. You'll be able to sleep at night. We have cascading replication. It takes a village, make a family, and daisy chains those nodes. You are able to say, here's my big happy. I want my big happy to replicate to my little happy and I want my little happy to replicate to his own little happy. And what's great about that 
is that the bandwidth between the big happy and the first little happy is probably really, really good. But it's possible that there's no link between the big happy and the last happy, but there is a link between the second happy and the third happy. And they can all be hot standbys. Which means you can do things like never back up your master and just back up your replicants, your clones, your DNA samples. I want to distribute. You can distribute via hot standby, cascading replication, and my personal favorite, PG Pool 2. I wish they were here. I wish they were here. They are such great guys. They're in the Japanese, the, the primary developers of PG Pool 2 are in the Japanese community, which is an awesome community. They're huge, um, but they don't get over here very often. What does PG Pool do? It does load distribution, it does query caching, and connection pooling. Talk about load distribution. The screen's so far away. I should have got a pointer. Dancing. Okay, so the P is PG pool. This is where all your queries are coming in. Okay, insert, update, select, delete. Anything that's a write is going to go right to Big Mr. Happy. Anything that's a read will go to the little happies automatically, transparently, as if it's not even there. Along the same lines, you can have the big happy also replicate to the red happy, which is your disaster recovery. And none of, the, none of this stuff here that I'm, one of the, the big arguments that I hear uh, about, say, a Mongo, or I don't hear this from Cassandra very much, but from a, mainly from a Mongo, is that, well, you just turn it on and it works. Um, usually I find that that's because they're not doing anything with it. Um, but this actually isn't that hard to set up. You can set this up, if, if you know what you're doing, you can set this up in a couple hours assuming you don't have like a terabyte database to copy over or something. If you don't know what you're doing, you're, you're really talking about a weekend of just understanding what's happening. This is not complicated stuff. Um, so we have our slave one, which is read only, our slave zero, which is read only, our master, which is read write, and then we back all the way over to our disaster recovery, which hopefully is sitting on the other side of the country, um, away from gas leaks in New York. Did you guys hear about this? We lost two buildings yesterday while we were all in here. Thankfully, nobody uh, died, which is great. Um, query caching, PG pool again with query caching. Their P is our PG pool while our queries come in. We got slow ass queries that we cache. That way they don't have to be slow ass queries. We just connect and there's our data. And obviously you wanna set some different parameters so they refresh and things like that. No, 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 we, that Postgres proper has materialized views. Uh, I'm actually talking about PG pool has a cache that will cache the results of specific queries and when those queries come in, it will grab, deliver those results. And yes, we do have materialized views. They're much better in 9.4. Uh, oh, here's a good question. What is the minimum version of Postgres acceptable to use? Come on, so, somebody, think about it. Steven, you're too easy. I can't give you all my money. <laughs> 9.2. I'm not knocking the hard work that was put in for years and years and years below 9.2, but there's one very simple reason 9.2 is the minimum. It's not just faster than every single other version before it. It's, it, it, it's like what the hell is that hipster car? Prius versus Ferrari. Okay, I mean, that, that's what we're talking about here. If you, any benchmarking you do, what you'll see is all the way back to, if you were crazy enough to run Postgres 95, it goes like this, da 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 da, seven one, seven two, seven three, eight, you know, and so on and so forth, and then it goes, nine dot two, okay? Nobody answered that, I'm very disappointed. Okay, next. Connection pooling, we are all about the renewable energy. <coughs> Who can tell me, without me going to the next slide, why connection pooling is important? This is worth 20 bucks, folks. You don't get to answer that. You, new guy, what's your name? Trey. Trey? Trey, Trey is the man. Trey, let us, let us have it. Why is connection pooling important? That is the basic result. In Postgres, making connections is expensive. This is what happens without connection pulling to your load. That's hand-drawn because I'm an expert. 
Okay? This is what happens with connection pooling to your load. The other thing it does is, is much better, not just resource utilization for processors, but it manages RAM and a whole bunch of, it helps manage RAM and other things a lot better. The, cat, the kernel cache, file cache, all that, not kernel cache, file cache, things like that. All right, I want to scale. This is the badass technology of the next century. It's all about second quadrant. Second quadrant, I'm not disrespect, I'm, I'm, I run a Postgres company, okay? Creditive, they're a Postgres company. Consistent State, they're a Postgres company. Enterprise DB, they're a marketing company. Um, I'm kidding, they're also a Postgres company. Um, but the honest, the true, and, and, and they're a great community member, guys. I'm just teasing them because they're the, you know, 800 pound gorilla. Um, Second Quadrant is doing the most badass stuff with Postgres right now. They are, it is awesome. They're doing the most interesting technology. They are providing the most interesting tools. And keep in mind, they're a competitor of mine. And there, there's no doubt. I love using my competitor's software. And it's all open source, so I'm allowed to do that. Uh, it is bi-directional replication, no million dollar license fee, no million dollar support contract, although I'll be happy to sign you up for one. With asset compliance, proper control, scaling in up to 48 nodes. Run that through your head. 48. Rack, you got to pay, what, a million bucks for two of them to sit next to each other and not work. This just works. This is not yet in core. You can download it as a distribution. They are working to get it in core. <clears throat> Excuse me, in core. The hope is that it will happen. This is water, by the way. Um, we're hoping to have it happen for 9.5 slash 10. I don't know what we're going to call it yet. It is eventually consistent. I've had people kind of say, well, eventually consistent doesn't work. And we're like, well, banks like it. And they seem to do all right. Yes? I don't mean to sound greedy, but why 48? You know, why not more? Or less? If Simon were in here, I would ask that question. You got it? Go for it. <coughs> It's an, an honest answer, basically. Okay, it's all too much. I just want to shard Postgres XL. Apparently, the talk on this was yesterday. I feel bad because I wanted to pimp it. Mason is the lead developer of that. Uh, uh, Jim in the back here used to have a, a failed company that was based around it. I just tease him because I was one of the initial investors. Um, but very cool technology, all open source. Um, and it allows you to shard and horizontally scale, and it's Postgres compatible and the whole bit. And again, it's open source. I want foreign data, link tables. We're not going to go through all this because I know I'm running out of time, uh, or I am out of time. <laughs> um, everything there, yes, we actually can query MailChimp. I don't know why. Um, or Twitter. I, I actually kind of understand that. Um, or S3, why the hell anyone would use that, I don't know. Um, but this is all the people we can just talk to natively from within Postgres. You can install an extension and query the remote source. So you've got a head, everybody knows you've got heterogeneous networks. It, it's very rare, five minutes. It's very rare that you have a situation where I, all I have is Linux and Apache and Python and Postgres. I'm in heaven. Usually it's I've got Linux and some Jackass installed Rails, and I got Postgres, and then I got some queuing mechanism over here, and then some guy's still using like Java. I don't know who uses Java anymore. Not that I have a problem with Java, it just I don't run into it anymore. Uh, and it's you're all over the place. You might even have to do Microsoft SQL. Maybe you know you got your accounting people thinking that it's a good idea. You can talk to it right there. This is the picture I'm trying to paint. Postgres understands that you need to be able to work. So we make our database, which is your database, because you're now here, able to work with whatever it is that you need to work with. Nobody else does that. Everybody else is all, let's just use me. I want some more 
functions in do. Imagine a world where you don't have to process millions of rows in PHP. I actually have recently been told that PHP isn't used all that much. It's still on my website. Um, instead, you let the database do it. Think about it. Do you really want to pull out five million rows into I don't care what language you're using? Process it all just to send it all the way back, especially if you're in a shared tenancy environment. Or would you rather just have posters go, hey, dude, I got this. Hold on a second. We're good. Here's your result. You can do it all right inside Postgres. And I'm not suggesting that you process credit cards in Postgres. And I say that because I had a customer doing that. And I, no, don't do that. You can, but don't. And do, by the way, do I talk about do? No, I didn't say that either. <laughs> it is my professional recommendation that you do nothing with PHP unless you have to. Not because PHP is bad, but because it is bad. Um, but and do, functions and do, I think I actually talk about this. So functions, I hate PLP. I don't know anybody who likes PLP, PGSQL. Okay, it's an ugly language. It's based on something that is as old as I am, ADA. Uh, but we offer you the ability, you can write your functions in Perl, Python, PHP. If you are one of these Node.js guys, we even have JavaScript capability to write our functions. In V8 of all things, which is a remarkably fast interpreter. Plus many, many more, Ruby. We, have, we even have PL Bash, okay? I hate the function paradigm, fine, use do, you fool. You get inline, dynamic, updatability right in whatever framework you decide to hang yourself with. You ever use do? Anybody here use do? Not you. Okay. <laughs> what do allows you to do? Do, 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 do. You can write your function and just execute it, like a script. Okay, I, just for the record, I let them know I was gonna run late. <laughs> um, two minute warnings are kind of like football, right? It's actually 20 minutes with commercials. Um, okay, you write, you can actually, let's say you're using Django, okay, at least it's Python. Um, you call out to the custom handler so that you can run custom scripts without running through their ORM or whatever. You can write your PL Python code, write in a do statement, and it will execute right in Postgres like it's a normal function and send things back. You're still processing in the database but the functions outside of the database, we, th there's a lot of good reasons for this. One, it allows you to manage it better because one thing we don't have very good right now is the ability to manage like functions with revision control and database revisions and things like that. There is some programs for it, but it's not integrated. But Postgres is old. Look, you retro plaid shared, shirt wearing hippie. We may be middle aged, but we have MBCC and transactions. Come on, everybody knows who this is. Is he still here? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I want to give props to this man. He has had a hell of a week. Not only has he been busting his ass to allow me to come speak to you, he's been busting his ass to allow you to come listen to me. Okay? Him and Jimmy, they're top-notch guys. They're above community fray, which is awesome. And they really made this shit happen. This is the best. This is better than any conference I've ever put on. It's the best one that the community has ever had that I've been to. No offense to PG Confi U that bust their ass too, but this is what? They do. Yeah, they do. Like we model after that, like it's amazing. Yeah, they do a really good job. But this is the best one that I've been to here in the states, and I I want a round of applause for them. They deserve it. <laughs> now everybody turn around because there's Jimmy. <laughs> you can go now. It's okay. <laughs> All right, columns are old school. Well, then fill your tables with J JSON B. Get ACID, MVCC, transaction, even two-phase commit. I believe Mongo has two-phase commit, but they haven't figured out anything else yet. Um, although they're working on, one of the things I love about this is that they all came down and said, no, this is the new way, everyone should do this. Six years later, shit, we really need to do what Postgres has been doing all along. They, they're actually working on things like MVCC now because they realize that their paradigm is broken. Um, did you know that you can use PostgreSQL functions to transform your proper relational data to that JSON thing? So you can keep your data sane and make your developers happy by letting them just call a function and it'll return JSON for them, right? This is, this is my favorite slide. The next slide is my favorite slide. I, I spent a long time just loving this slide. 
going to use NoSQL. My daughter loved fluorescent ponies when she was six, too. Okay? Eric Evans, I don't know the man, I'm sure he's very smart, because that's the problem, is that when you get really smart people that aren't properly managed, you get new SQL. Reintroduced the term NoSQL in early 2009, which is what? Six years ago. See, isn't that a great slide? I just love these. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. Now, I know you guys think I've off my rocker, but again, I'm not getting paid for this, and you came in sad. So here we go. Donate. Uh, we prefer dollars now. We used to prefer euros. We now prefer dollars. Okay? And we don't take pesos. Uh, Postcontrol.org about donate. I would point you just to PGUS because that's a nonprofit that I'm directly associated with, except I'm also directly associated with .org through SPI. So go to about donate. Pick your favorite organization, whether it be Europe, .org, or .us. .us, because that's where we are. Uh, and give all your money over and above your liquor and mortgage, and uh, we will take care of you. N not like the Europeans do. We don't strike like them. Um, for the following questions, do not shout out, please raise your hand. These are the bad boys, okay? Please, raise your hand. Who is the original singer of the lyrics in this talk, and what is the title of the song? You were first, Michael. Boom, 40 bucks. And that, oh yeah, okay. Now, this is for the Japanese whiskey. Who was the, what was the name of the 80s movie cover in this talk? You were first. It was. Hibiki, 12 year. You're welcome to have it. Thank you. You're welcome. For the red breast, for the record, cast strength, which is 116.4 proof. Hey, I almost came with Booker's, which is 136 proof. But it comes in a box with a glass front, and it was just a little too white trash. Um, for the red breast Irish, who's the original director, director of the original? Boom. You got it. I hope you, okay, don't answer if you don't drink whiskey, okay? That's just not cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> For, whoa, no, come back. Sweetie, what happened? Crap, I have no power. Oh, no. Why do I have no power? There it is. There it is. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's right. Okay. I don't know how long this is going to last. Oh, here it is. Yes. No phones. Oh, you, the fact. Got a daughter. Zane. Zane. Okay, fair enough. That's right. The fact. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. The fact that this gentleman was willing to remove all of his masculinity in front of us, he gets the scotch. Now, why don't I have power? I have other things to say. It's not cool, man. Here, hold on, hold on. I'm almost done, but this is got, I got to have power. Ugh. Did that give me power? I have no power. I hope you didn't pay for this power. All right, well, does anybody have any questions real quick? Any questions? All right, we're done. Have a great day.